been a, a long-standing need for infrastructure development in Tanzania, and that is widely recognized. I think a lot of the recent studies that have been done on aid effectiveness are particularly interesting. Recent surveys showing that health indicators have improved, education indicators have improved, and these are things that will feed into growth slowly over time. But to make an immediate impact on income levels and income growth to try to alleviate poverty in the near term. There really needs to be a focus on agriculture given that it's what most of the population is involved in. Infrastructure of course has been a key bottleneck in that regard and the government has turned its attention to addressing that bottleneck. Tanzania is Africa's third largest gold producer after South Africa and Ghana. And during these difficult economic times, gold should be a bit of a good news story, but mining the yellow metal is proving a challenge. And the biggest challenge here is the lack of adequate infrastructure. There are a lot of challenges in Tanzania, but other than security, I think our second major challenge probably is infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure in Tanzania is not that well developed. Uh, it is very challenging. I see mines operate in very remote area, and the connection between the mines and ports is you have a long track of land, so you have to either to drive or use a rail. The rail, the central rail, is um, you know almost 40 years old. It's now being uh, rehabilitated, uh, but in patches, so it's still a big problem. Cargo clearance on the port is a big problem. You have a lot of stack of containers, three, four levels. Um, and, and it becomes very inefficient for, for us as, as a mine. But the third problem uh, is the power situation. Uh, there's a huge shortage uh, of power supply in, in this country, uh, and looking long term is likely to be more of a problem. But it's not only poor infrastructure that's posing a threat to the development of the sector. Authorities themselves are putting a spanner in the works as they plan to implement a new mining policy regime which will more than likely increase royalty rates and give fewer tax breaks to mining companies. And some say this could deter investors, particularly as the world sees metal prices tanking. But I'm more concerned about the future of the mining sector. Um, uh, as a country, are we going to choose uh, big mining companies that we can monitor, or are we going to go uh, the uh, Sierra Leone and Congo uh, route where uh, the, the argument will be okay, have Tanzanians uh, invest. If we were to take politics out of the mining sector in Tanzania, which would be very difficult at this point, we, I would have recommended that we go for big large scale mi mining companies like most of these countries have done, like in Botswana, you don't really have a drive of individual Botswanans going to do uh, mining. And simply because you cannot enforce environmental standards when you have hundreds of people, you cannot uh, ensure royalty, I mean payment of taxes, royalties as well. So the issue is individual Tanzanians or the whole lot of Tanzania. And then also because <coughs> of this politicization of the sector, People forget that the big mining companies that we have, about six of the largest mining companies here, um, they cover less than 96% of the mining activities in the country. But one area where there are huge developments in infrastructure and no slowdown in demand is the telecommunications sector. As with other African countries, telecoms development poses a conundrum for economists as to the real underlying growth of a country. It just doesn't seem to add up that the telecom sector in Tanzania is growing at around 20%, while most of the population still lives in poverty, and only 9% have access to formal banking. And that's where mobile banking comes in. As economists, we think we know a lot about African economies, but there's still great uncertainty as to the actual size of these economies. Is Tanzania, for example, as large as we think, or is there a large informal sector still not accounted for in the official statistics? The interesting thing about the telecom sector, especially mobile telecoms, is that it's a way to tap this informal economy, demand that previously perhaps hadn't been noted, didn't impact on the formal economy, didn't control contribute to the tax base in any meaningful way. The advent of mobile telecoms in Africa has provided a means of tapping into that sector. And this is why I think we're starting to see these dramatic growth rates. In a sense, it's really just telling us that the economy that actually exists may be larger than we think. Commercial banks uh, 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 can and are reaching out further. 
uh, that's great, and, and we're helping them to do that. I think one of the most exciting developments is going to be the role that mobile telephony can play in this, because Tanzania is both blessed and, in a sense, cursed by its size and its low pop population density. Combine that with pretty weak infrastructure, and you've got a real problem for banks to actually set up fixed branches. The numbers don't add up in, in many, many rural areas. Standard Chartered Bank agrees. Standard Chartered Bank is, doesn't, doesn't itself compete on the number of branches because I think we've already got banks, microfinance organizations who specifically have uh, a gambit to increase the number of uh, outlets there. Uh, its strategy is really has been to look at alternative channels to bring banking services to, to its customers. We've recently launched mobile banking, so we're the first bank to launch mobile banking in the market, which allows customers to transfer money, um, to look at their balances, to look at mini statements, etc. Um, which I think will bring significant uh, customer convenience. Uh, we believe the mobile banking channel uh, is, is a particularly uh, critical channel going forward just because mobile penetration is, is countrywide. For Zantel, the third mobile operator in Tanzania, originally an import from the island of Zanzibar, mobile banking forms a pivotal role in the company's strategy. We were the first of the operators to launch a mobile banking service here. And we do see that as a very positive, not just for, for, for the sake of, move, it's more than money. That's, that's the way we describe it. Uh, it's more than just moving money. It's about creating an infrastructure which can facilitate trade in, in, in the broadest of senses. Um, the telephone can be a great enabler um, itself in, in helping people to, who, who are in remote locations to communicate with each other and do business differently. And we've seen that happen by overlaying on top of that uh, an infrastructure which allows money to be transferred, payments to be made, uh, grants to be paid. Uh, there's a whole range of things uh, that, that become possible. Overall, Tanzania's banking sector remains liquid, but to make sure it stays that way, government has put a task force together to monitor the situation. The first area that, that, that they really concentrated on was to make, to ensure that there is stability in the banking sector, which so, which so far we were saying we have succeeded. And of course the, the financial sector reforms that we have made, the economic reforms, have helped us a lot in terms of stabilizing the, the, the banking sector. But, no, but now we are, we are, we are seeing, we are seeing um, the, 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 the Im impact of the, of, of the, of the, crisis, the economic crisis in the, in the West or in the developed countries now are I I affecting our, um, our, our commodity markets. Uh, the, the prices are declining, are beginning to fall. We are, getting, we are getting difficulties selling some of our commodities. We are beginning to see fall in, the, in tourist arrivals. Uh, we are going to see investments also being, being, being affected. At the end of the day, this, this may have an impact on, on, on the whole financial stability. They have an impact on growth of the, of the economy. They have an impact of our foreign exchange earnings. So they look at these issues and, they, and then they, they recommend. What do we do? Probably recently they were saying probably we should, not, we should now look for other, for other, we should become more proactive in looking for other sources of investment.